Hey buddies, it's Dylan and we've got Joshua McDonald here. Josh, you did something pretty cool this weekend. What'd you do? I, I did pretty well at a, a decently sized tournament over the past weekend. <laughs> got top 32 at the NAWCQ. And what were you playing? I was playing best deck, Ritual Beast. <laughs> Well, congratulations. Uh, before we start, are there any shout-outs you want to give? Uh, yes, got quite a few, actually, so fear we oh, knock okay. that out first. He's, he's got a list. I, I, got, I got it written down <laughs> and everything, so. So, uh, shout-outs, obviously, to uh, Nikolai, Steven, and uh, Tyler, who drove down to, you know, Austin, Texas. Everyone was shocked that we drove down, but, you know, it was a long, long road trip. It was a lot of fun. Um, then shout out uh, again to Nikolai, Stephen, Gabe, and Rob for doing a lot of testing at Nikolai's house. Also, thanks to Nikolai for letting us test there. And the band, of course, for allowing us into there. <laughs> uh, shout out to Tyler for letting me uh, borrow his Proto since I didn't want to buy one. Uh, it was kind of a good card, apparently. Uh, Matt for getting me the last couple cards I needed when I opened seven boxes and opened zero of the new <laughs> Lara. I opened everything else, though. Uh, and then uh, Stephen and Tyler again for getting me food during the event because a long day, a lot longer than I expected <laughs> it to be. <laughs> and then uh, shout out to Dylan, RC, Gabe, Rob, Sinjin, Austin, Raz, and Alex for being a part of the local crew that went down there. Um, Galaxy Comics and Fusion Gaming for being locals that we play at. Um, and uh, the Ritual Beast Facebook and Discord group as well for being pretty active and showing deck lists and talking about things before the event. and made me change some last minute things I was thinking of. Uh, and then shout out to Ed Wargio, Swisky and Chew as well for making excellent Ritual Beast content on uh, YouTube and specifically Ed Wargio as well for posting, you know, like autobiographies of this deck, I swear <laughs> on YouTube, for our videos, friends a madman, but was like a huge inspiration for one to learn how to play this deck and definitely, definitely helped. So yeah, so that's... Uh, all the shout outs there. Okay, awesome. Let's get right into it. All right, so Ritual Beast. So, got three Carnhawk, three Rampengu. Um, I know some people are playing two, and then one of the Noble Knight Shield Bearer. Um, I was gonna try it out, uh, but then I was like, this just plays better under Droll. So, cause you Shield Bearer search this, um, and you just lose to Droll. So, went with the three instead. And then the one Apelio, kind of just need it. Also, nobody understands how the attack boost works. It's not what you currently have, it's just for the rest of the turn, and people didn't believe me when I said that. Not that it come up, had come up, because against a 10 pie player, they were like, well, it wasn't on the field already. I was like, well, yeah, I know he's already lethal on board, but, you know, it's, it's still a 500 attack boost, so <laughs> not that it was relevant, but it was funny they didn't believe me. Uh, and then you have the best card in the deck, the Spirit's Beast Tamerlara. Uh, this card is... Insane, letting you just extend with one card combos and then extend through interruptions and everything. And then, honestly, one of my favorite cards from the weekend, uh, the look at my opponent's face when I normal summon this and they have a little knight on the board and I go crash and then I summon the link four and they're like, they can do that? <laughs> I was like, yeah, because this thing, uh, conveniently enough, is 1600 attack. So out the little knight and summon something else, kind of bonkers. Uh, and then three elder, uh, nobody actually imperm this. Uh, one guy who I was probably thinking of imperming it was reading the card, and then I explained to him. And I was like, I was being pretty fair with it. I was like, it's like gimmick puppet nightmare. Once it's summoned, it's just it already ha I already have the extra normal summon, so there's no point in using the imperm. Guy was really cool. It was a lot of fun to play against, and I definitely let him save that imperm, but it was okay. So I won anyways. <laughs> uh, and then the other tamers we played, we played one Wen, uh, one Pilika, and one Lara. Uh, the Lara and the Wen are pretty standard. The Pilka I played over Petalfin, or instead of just playing none of them as well. Um, there's some lines with like E-Telly that is relevant for, and also just being able to like bring back the Link 4, which everyone had to read the card multiple times. Everyone read every card multiple times in games. It took forever, but. <laughs> uh, I would definitely still probably continue playing this. I wouldn't mind trying without it just to play like more non-engine, but it definitely came up enough where I was like, this is a good card, so. Uh, and then the best part of the deck, the Nemesis stuff. So Nemesis Flag, obviously searching Nemesis Corridor and the Protos. So I just disgusting. Fair, <laughs> fair and balanced Yu-Gi-Oh right here. I swear. I love when my when I lose die roll and I force to go first. I'm like, cool. It's ten pie. Call fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's kind of good or something. I don't know. Won so, a couple rounds. How many times this weekend did you summon Protos blind call fire? Uh, 
zero, actually. Wow. <laughs> well, apart from when I was forced to go first, I knew it was ten pi, and if it wasn't ten pi, like that's crazy. But <laughs> <laughs> how often did the protos come up when you were going second specifically? Um, once or twice. Didn't come up too often as like a board breaker, but definitely in like practice, like they definitely can come up with the card, and. One of the last minute changes to the deck list is that I was siding this, maining these, because I didn't want to like blind call something game one with this. Like call fire and then my opponent's like, cool, summon new bell. I'm like, hmm, my combo is wasted on that. So that's kind of why I played this as well. Um, the Colossus definitely came up a couple times for sure. Uh, yeah, there was, I don't know, I really enjoyed playing like the Corridor and the Protos. Um, you definitely could choose to not play this. Um, I just like the security of knowing going first I have a guaranteed play that will work uh, versus something that might not work. Although to be fair later on in the rounds I could just start blind calling like light instead to turn off all the Fiendsmith stuff game one. It was definitely something you could do instead of just playing this and just keeping an extra space. So but I don't know this engine is it was so good throughout the whole tournament. Like when you get drolled and you like open corridor and you still end on like a Colossus plus Ulti Ray and Steeds it's kind of crazy. <laughs> uh, and then, um, oh, this could be arguably the best card in the deck, is uh, Dimension Shifter. I don't really need to explain this card, it's just good. It's Dimension Shifter. <laughs> yeah, Everyone knows what this does. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then for consistency cards, we played three Inheritance and two Prosperity. Um, I was originally just playing three Inheritance and no Prosperity, and I was playing like two more non-engine. Um, but definitely like this card going second just is so good being able to just, you know, it's prosperity. It's so good. And then the weird thing with the deck is that like going first, you don't really need to banish six to look at six. You can really just banish three because the extra deck's pretty tight. And there's also so many cards you can see that just work off each other. So realistically, you could go to like three and two because there were times where like I had opened this and there was no name in hand and so you can't use this. Um, but that doesn't happen too often. Um, also, this card is Flares against Tenpai. It's getting to summon, tag out like an ulti Karnok, summon two things, and then switch their Tenpai to defense mode. Uh, that's real funny, and then when Tenpai players have to read that like three times, also really funny. <laughs> and then uh, three e -Telly. Um This card was really good. I mean, this is another one of the few extenders, because this deck does not have many extenders. Uh, but this is definitely one of the better ones. Being able to like summon out any of the Tamers or the Tamer Lara, which is either a Spiritual Beast or a Tamer, which was just super good. Um, and then we played three Book of Eclipse um, as some of our non-engine. Um, this card was really good. Um, like It comes up several times where like your opponent's going to like try and imperm something. Um, and then you can just like flip it face down to dodge it, or if like your opponent does like an early Nibiru, you can just like flip your things face down. They can still fuse, which is nice. So it might just hurt your combo in the end. You might not be able to take full board, but you don't just auto lose to Nibiru then. And then like going second, it just forces out things. Going first is also really solid. Like against Snake Eyes, like they get a certain board set up, and they just like flip like two or three things face down. It's just like it's just game at some points like that. And then two towns. This was the last minute change that I made. I was playing three Ash Blossom and playing 41 cards in the main. Uh, we took the ashes out and played these instead, so dropping it down to 40. Uh, this card was insane. Like, being able to just, like, I got hand trapped, I can town slick my opponent's hand, know what I'm playing against, and now I can just go for Protoss Lock instead of going for a Colossus. Um, then also, like, just like being able to just like rip hand traps or engine cards. Uh, I'll definitely explain a little bit more in one or, one or two of my rounds of some situations this card really came up. Um, but yeah, I definitely would honestly maybe consider going up to three of this card, um, just because you really want to see it. Uh, and then I was on one Steeds. Uh, early builds, I was playing two, uh, but with the Protos, um, like the Nemesis stuff, you just, you can really usually only search one efficiently. Um, and one is really all you need, because the Link 4 can recycle it if it gets banished as well. Uh, but also everyone had to read this card, because it doesn't target, and I was like, well, what are you popping? I was like, well, it pops a resolution, so I don't have to say yet. We get there. <laughs> <laughs> so this card was just nuts. It's such a good card. And the last three cards was three Imperm. Um, just as another, just generic, like, good going first, good going second. Used it as a hand trap, used it as a board breaker. Like, it was just... Very good. Nobody played into the imprim column, so 
<laughs> Lucky them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we were only playing 11 non-engine. Uh, I definitely did try and get up to more. Like I was originally playing, like I had a list with like 17, I had a list with 14, a list with 16 non-engine. Um, but like realistically the deck with how it functions can definitely play through boards with just having a number of ritual beasts in hand and everything. Which is surprising because now considering how few extenders there actually are with the deck, um, I definitely would contribute some of the success to people just not knowing how to actually stop the deck. So that's rogue for you there though. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, 40 in the main. Uh, and then extra deck. So we played two of Ulti Con Hawk. Uh, classic, you know. Two Nachi Drago. This card was really good. Uh, the fact that it tags out into any Ritual Beast monster is just insane. Uh, being able to tag out into like your Link monsters that are banished. Not the fusions because you can't special summon them. Um, and also the targeting prevention was also really, really relevant throughout the whole weekend. Uh, and then one Ulti Apelio. Um, you can choose to not play this. Sometimes the lines come up where you need to banish this off the Rampengu to send Apelio. Um, I, I did actually summon this once to attack. Um, it's not necessary. kind of wanted to do it just because I could. knew I had the game in the bag already, but... <laughs> Uh, and then Ulti Guy Pelio, uh, this card is insane. Like when you open a hand of like all Ritual Beasts going first and you like make this super early in your combo, have like four names in hand and then still like Ulti Ray Protoss lock my opponent with Steeds and have like four negates with this. It's just so strong. <laughs> and then one Colossus because we're playing the corridor. Um, yeah, it's Colossus. You don't really need to explain that card. Uh, and then one Banshee, Nemesis stuff, card's just really good. Uh, and then we played one of the Link 2, Altakimu Falcos, and then two of the Link 4. Um, I was playing two and one, um, mostly because sometimes you want to have an extra Psychic to send for a Rampengu. Because sometimes in some of the combos, like, you have to banish two Psychics, um, and having an extra one of this, and then keeping, like, the ulti guy Pelio sometimes is nice. Um, and I was playing two of this instead of this. I swapped it around because there were times where like the first one would get outed and if I had recycled the second one I was like well I'll just make a second one because I can because this deck can just flood the board with so many names. Uh, and then Ify Mascarena, Little Knight, Appalooza, and Zelantis. These are all pretty self-explanatory. They're just good cards. Uh, the Zelantis was rather interesting. Uh, I forget which. I think it was Jojo ASMR I think that topped uh, and he was playing this as like, sort of an OTK card. Um, it was really strong because like you just turn like you can turn like a used Appalooza into this or the Link 4 into this Because like you can use this to add like the Pilica or Lara back and then link this off into the Zelantis Summon the Tamer bring this back. It's co-link now so you can pop two um, It was just it was just really strong and definitely came up several times throughout the tournament And then the side deck uh, We played three DD Crow uh, I chose to play these over Bistials because of the Beatrice sending stuff like Black Goat Laughs, which if they call Ulti Conahawk and we don't have a good hand, we just auto lose to that. So that's kind of why I play this over Bistials. In hindsight, probably could have played Bistials instead. Um, sometimes the extra body would have been nice, but the flexibility of this had was definitely did come up throughout the tournament. Also, banishing like non licensed darks was also very relevant. And then three, Draw and Lockbird. Uh, chose to play those over the Nibiru. Probably could have swapped, but like I didn't really see the draws too often, anyways, so it was okay. It's draw. Uh, and then we played one cowboy as the time card. <laughs> I, I shockingly did not go into time a single time in the whole tournament. Wow. With the amount of reading that my opponents did, it just never came up. I was like, they read all my cards game one when I'm comboing, Protoss locked them. They draw for turn, like, we'll go next game. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. That's just going to make this super easy. So, yeah, it never came up. Could take it out, but, like, at the same time, it's nice just, just to have in case your opponent reads too long. <laughs> <laughs> and then three Cosmic, sort of to respect, like, the stun decks and back row, and they didn't really come up at all. I brought them in in my top 64 against Tenpai, just as something to deal with, like, the field spell. And instead, uh, it baited out uh, a Cosmic on my Cosmic, which was nice instead of the Steeds. So, that's kind of good. Uh, and then we played two d as a going first card. Um, just another Dimension Shifter. The best thing about it is that you can't get drolled under it, which is nice. Um, and even going second, like Snake Eyes, like turning off like Flamberg is kind of nice sometimes. So, 
realistically, this could be something else as well. Um, the side deck was kind of weird throughout the whole tournament, but this card definitely was like okay though. And the last card was three evenly. Uh, this card was good though. Um, saw it a couple times, won a couple games because of it. Um, definitely did enjoy it. I know I was helping out uh, Nikolai with his side deck, and we were playing. He was playing droplets with evenly uh, to out like the U Bell Ward because then they can't abominable to the Diservate to like play around the dart the to Diservate to negate this, and then you can just like droplet send this, and then something else that they can't uh, abominable chain block things, so you can still play something on a droplet. So um, yeah, the card was good though. Um, Realistically, yeah, the side deck was kind of, was not happy with it going into the tournament, and, like, it performed okay, um, but, yeah, no, the deck was, like, really solid, um, there wasn't much I would realistically change with it, um, yeah, so, that's nice. kind of the deck list there. So, going with my rounds for the tournament, so, round one we played against Tenpai, uh, round two was Fiend Snake, round three was Fiend Snake, Round four was Fiendubel. Round five was Runic Whitewood. Round six was Melodious, which is my first loss of the day. Um, misplayed in that round. Um, I forgot that the Aria prevents targeting. And so I had SP effect, didn't declare target. And I was like, oh wait, I have to banish something now at this point. So I banished one of his scales and then made Zelantis to flip the Aria and then out it with the Zelantis and then couldn't swing directly for games. Since he had judgmented twice that turn, um, so in hindsight, that was definitely a misplay. Um, definitely should have won that round, but no, guy was uh, super cool. Uh, round seven, we played against Fiend Snake. Round eight was Tenpai. Round nine was Memento. So we're eight and one uh, after day one, so 34th overall. Uh, and then starting on day two, uh, round 10 was uh, Fiend Ubel. Uh, and then round 11 was Fiend Snake, which I lost that one. And round 12 was Fiend Ubel. Um, that one I knew who I was playing against because he was just on the feature match So I knew what to call it, Protoss game one, which was nice And then I was 19th after Swiss, 10 and 2 And then top 64 play against Tenpai And then top 32 play against Fiend Bell, which I lost uh, Game one I won, uh, game two I lost, and then game three my opening hand was Tamer Lara, Pilika, Apelio, Protoss, and Inheritance And he draw phase Mulchummy and I was like, okay, I was Protoss Locky out of the game anyways, that's fine. And then I go activate Inheritance, effect reveal Apelio. And he ghost ogres it. And I was like, hmm, this hand doesn't do anything now. <laughs> so set Apelio, and then he ended up having lethal on board at, on his turn. And it was game over. But top 32 still so was good. Um, and then talking about some of the rounds quickly. So round 8 against Tenpai. Uh, game three, he chose to go first. He goes normal summon Pydra, search the trap that skips the main phase, sets another card, passes. My opening hand is uh, like Tamer Lara, uh, Rich Spirits Beast, Tamer Lara, Conok, Rampengu, Double Eclipse, and something else. And so draw phase, I activate Eclipse, flip his Pydra, so the trap's offline. Normal summon, I use the Tamer Lara's effect to summon the Conhawk. Conhawk effect, he imperms it. Normal summon Rampengu, it gets Veilered. This whole time, I could have looked for clips to dodge it, but it just didn't matter because I already had the Tamalar, and that's just combo with everything that I had there already. So that was a situation where Eclipse was good, and also I just didn't need it also. Um, round 10 was the Fiend Jubel written feature match. So there was definitely something that I did that was kind of weird for sure. <laughs> um, so definitely in game two, I misplayed. Uh, I didn't... in. Before the tournament, I didn't have much testing versus the U Bell deck at all, so I didn't quite know what Phantom did because reading's hard. Uh, so I didn't realize it doesn't destroy the monster that it negates, um, which is why I wasn't using Ram Tengu effect. Because um, if it got destroyed under Shifter, I would have just been left with Elder, so I would have had no play at all. Um, in hindsight, I just Ram Tengu every day and just get there and maybe just 2 0 that. Uh, but then in game three, I opened Shifter again all three games that round <laughs> and um i choose to not use the shifter um because i lost to nibiru in game two um because it's very hard to play around the nibiru under shifter because you need to get a certain number of things into the graveyard in order to combo and that's why i didn't shifter in that game 
and also I completely messed up forgetting the pendulum mechanic works <coughs> um, with the uh, linking off the pillica and then realizing oh yeah it's a pendulum instead of going to the graveyard it goes to the extra deck and that definitely prevented me from comboing because in the line I had taken I was gonna not to drag out tag out into the banished chemo falcos chemo falcos tag out into what should have been the tamer lara and the apelio but instead I only had the apelio and not the Pilica, because it was in the extra deck now, which uh, <laughs> made it a little awkward, not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, I guess that was about it. Um, Shifter, I, oh, with Shifter, I saw it six times day one, out of 27 games, Jeez. and then day two, I saw it eight of 14 games. <laughs> <laughs> so over half the time, that's crazy. So that was, uh, that was definitely something to see. And, uh, you know, Shifter definitely, I didn't win day one because of Shifter. It was definitely just like playing through engine for engine pretty much. So that was good. Um, anything, any last things here? I have a whole bunch of notes here, but I think that's about it. Um, oh, I guess for like dice roll wins, I definitely won quite a few. So that also definitely helped. Uh, and the dice roll, I think I lost die roll every time against Tenpai. So I basically won every die roll against Tenpai then, because they just make you go first. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that definitely also helped uh, with some of the rounds I won. But definitely, deck felt really strong. So, right. Well, awesome. Congratulations. A super huge feat. Now let's get one last look at this mat and that prize card. <laughs> oh, baby, look at that. Yes, and then we got the, the best token made with us. <laughs> so they're holding up a uh, shifter. I got, oh a, my God. got a good laugh from the token <laughs> line behind us when they saw they were holding that up. So that was very funny to see. Right. Well, once again, congratulations. Such an amazing feat. Technically the best Ritual Beast player in North America as of right now. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And we'll see you guys next time.